ET Retail Cafe presented by ET Retail. It's a new episode, a new story, a new retailer. So today we have with us Akhil Dugajain, who is the ED of Madam. Madam is a premier retail brand under the umbrella of Jain Amar Group. So Jain Amar Group was started by his grandfather in 1939 and Madam as a brand in the Western Wear category for it into 1980. So let's know more about the brand and the story about it and what are the plans ahead. So we have Akhil. Akhil, welcome to ET Retail, it's ET Retail Cafe. Would love to know from you what was the idea of, of your grandfather before starting this brand and venturing into the garment segment. So, hi Charu, welcome to our office today. It's good, so good to have you uh, with us today. So, 1939, yes, my grandfather as a big family, uh, you know, just to, uh, you know, make the ends meet per se, it was very humble beginnings. So, they migrated from the now Punjab side of Pakistan to the Punjab side of India and they started with, uh, uh, you know, manufacturing of cotton mufflers because, you know, uh, Punjab was primarily dominant with winters. So, they started with uh, mufflers and then uh, uh, a lot of my grandfather's brother and my grandfather did a lot of machine work manufacturing by their own hands with very uh, traditional machines and slowly, slowly they grew from, uh, you know, from manufacturing to a wholesale shop, from manufacturing to a brand, from manufacturing to a retailer. The journey has been very, very phenomenal. It's been a very phenomenal journey. So you must have seen at home uh, your dad, your grandfather talking about the business. So where was the idea of you joining the business came from? Were you inspired from their talks, what they were discussing at the house? Or was there any other inspiration which attracted you to the business? So my grandfather who has been a very an ideal for us within the family, I mean we don't have to look for many ideas outside the family. So he always had one thought that you know, uh, if, you, if you work for yourself, so you'll be feeding your family. So, but if you work for the community as a manufacturer, as a retailer, so probably today if, if I have got more than 2,000 people on my payroll, so, so directly I'm responsible for feeding families of 2,000 people as a business. So that always stuck into our minds, the minds of my generation. And we always, you know, always cherished. Uh, I remember as youngsters when we used to go to the manufacturing plants of retailers. So he would ensure that we touch the feet of all the elderly people that th those were there just to ensure, you know, that the, the mental equilibrium remains in the place and probably till date it has been so. So I mean the values which he inculcated into you and you are imparting in the organization going ahead. This is what? Yes, yes. We, we, we are trying it very hard and you know people have been true responsive. I've got so many people who've been with us uh, for uh, one, one decade, one and a half decade. Uh, even uh, so I joined my office back in 2003. That's been almost 20 years now after I finished my graduation from National Institute of Fashion Technology in New Delhi. And the first thing when I came back to my, uh, to, went to Ludhiana, where is the, which is the hometown and primarily the manufacturing place there. So uh, I was taken to the wholesale shop over there and uh, okay, so your primarily care is you attend the customer, you pack the goods and you know, you d deliver the goods from one place to the other place. That was my primary care is for the first six months for them to test me, is that boy ready to, the, to do the hardships and will he be a good custodian to take this company and brand forward and probably, uh, which probably me and my other kids have been doing it uh, pretty nicely. So, I mean, you have into the business, you have understand the ground level nitty gritties that way and then started take, taking the responsibilities ahead. Yes, that's true. So, so uh, I report to my, uh, uh, the senior director, Mr. Vipin Jain, who's my uncle. So, I think it took me about, about eight years sitting on his chair for the first time. So, whenever, you know, in his absence, I had to, you know, do some of his jobs, I would always sit on a side chair and not on his chair because I could understand, you know, that chair was very, 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 you know, it's a tough chair to be. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So uh, how it feels to be sitting there on that tough chair now? <laughs> so, so, so I would say, you know, the, my, my, my peer group, my parents, my uncle and my father, they've been so generous in, you know, raising us as who we are today. And they've always believed in a very smooth transition. So my grandfather transited very smoothly to my parents and my uncle and the, both of them are transiting it now. Uh, it's a wonderful transition. They're doing it with this generation as well. So I am 20, 20 years in the business. My younger one is about 18 years and the youngest one is about 10 years in the business. And everybody has been so meticulously given a delegation of authority that how you operate, how you behave and how you take things forward. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so being a third generation entrepreneur, you must have seen uh, the business which was there from almost a uh, century right so uh, you must have seen that the world is changing the retail industry is changing what were the ch changes that you have brought to match the pace hmm. uh, 
of the growing retail industry yeah. these days. So as you as rightly said, so we will be entering the ninth decade of this enterprise now, and you know we are very very excited. You know to you know just telling my grandfather that okay, you please be with us for another ten years, and we will you know sail it through to the next hundred years in front of you and. So, so uh, uh, innovation and sustainability and being relevant has been ingrained in this company for a long time. What I have seen on the history of how this company has, you know, uh, behaved and matured, and we are still following the same principles of, you know, being relevant, being innovative, and being sustainable. And that's why today, uh, in spite of a lot of competition in the market, uh, with the FDIs opening up, with a lot of foreign brands also coming in the market, we are still. We're still there. We're still relevant. We're still growing, expanding. So probably I would say innovation is one major thing. You know that's ingrained in this company, which is helping everyone and openness to ideas, be it be from the family members or be it from outside the family members, has has been a very good uh, you know uh, ingredient with us. I like one thing. About, I must say you are not going to be growing in Bharat or. Only in India, you are growing across Bharat and across India. If, if we go back to the roots of the company, so we started from a city called Ludhiana, north 300 kilometers north of Delhi, and so we started with manufacturing. So we've all been that tier two mentality. So we grew from there, and my uncle, who had the who had the courage and capacity to go beyond that city, when he opened his first store, Madam store, in 2002 in Mumbai, and that was his first attempt, and we could we could we could envision. the passion he had for the brand for the product for you know being very different from the what ludhiana behaved like and because of his passion we shifted the corporate about 7 years ago to gurgaon and that's again is a testimony of his vision and the baton he is trying to you know give a gift to us and we are taking it forward so when you talk about your your uncle and your father so were they the were they the ones who started the uh, brand madam or was it your grandfather who for it from the woolen business into this thing yeah so uh, technically it was my father and my uncle after they were they were in the business for about a decade and a half and a half decade so in family owned companies it always takes you one in decade to actually you know get some kind of authority it's very easier for people who come on payroll to get to get, get those authorities but yes post they were there so they were the ones who been instrumental in you know in 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 transitioning from traditional woolen to uh, you know fashion and something fancier so i think in late 80s we we forward we started with a brand called uh, gold queen which still exists it's a small percentage of our business today but it still exists so that was the first time where traditional woolen was converted into high fashion product and because my father and my uncle have been you know traveling across europe across southeast asia even in the 80s so they always used to see you know women's fashion was always something which excited them both and it was obviously it was a very uh, immature category in um, in india i remember when we started madam in the early 90s and uh, delhi delhi university the the, the uh, north campus was a primarily a very hot spot for us and we could realize that you know after 15 years the women at that time you know they had to, once they are 15 or 16 out of college so they had to switch over their attire to traditional wear the more hip covering thing you know it was very different i'm talking about 30 years back yeah it was very different than what we see today uh, so that's that's the maturity you know the brand has done so the girl who was 15 years old that 30 years back and today probably she'll be 40 45 she's still my customer so that is the relevance that i have today so i have matured with my customer i'm still relevant for her and because i'm relevant for her i'm also relevant for her daughter today true that <laughs> so your uncle and your dad brought a change what changes are you planning to bring into the business So yes, so obviously they gave us a beautiful platform with a beautiful product, a beautiful uh, supply chain system. So my generation, or you know, I've been given the baton to you know to to professionalize it further, to ensure that the business is elongated, has a longevity, and it still uh, stays relevant. So for me, uh, all the retail ecosystem was you know uh, developed under my mentorship, my team's effort. and so we are today sitting at more than 175 exclusive brand stores across the country and otherwise also presence across 400 other out, uh, other point of sales including uh, large format retailers and uh, multi brand stores and your online marketplaces so i have been given the baton to take this forward and take the company to maybe um, a public listing oh is public listing on the cards we are we are working backwards toward it so we always begin you always begin with the end in mind so you know we have we have created a, a mid term target you know to uh you to get more transparent get more organized get more professional and and you know and so we have, we have, we are trying to do that and you know a lot of things are getting you know tick marked day by day <laughs> so on this journey which i mean is going to lead to the ipo you must have faced some challenges also there must be some risks you have must have taken 
what were those challenges what was those risk and how did you mitigate those risks hmm. see as a businessman every day is full of challenges uh, you know uh, you do a lot of projections you you create a lot of aspirational uh, aspirational you know projections and every time it doesn't mature the way it has to mature they always say you know once you put everything in place and say okay my my plane is ready to take off at a good speed and all of a sudden you have a speed breaker so for example, COVID can be a speed breaker, as True. everybody saw it. Competition can be a speed breaker. Your own team management skills can be a speed breaker. Your funds can be speed breakers at times. But as businessmen, we understand that we have to overcome them. And it's, it's a cycle. I mean, you, you, it, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up. It's like an ECG machine. It goings, going, keeps going up, keeps coming down. So everything is fine. If it becomes a flat line, you're dead. So you love challenges that way. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, you cannot resist it. The moment, you keep, it, it's, it's natural, it's going to happen. Even if you keep resisting, it'll still happen. So better go with the flow. So may I say technology was also a challenge uh, or was it a smooth road, a smooth ride for you guys? Yeah, tech has been uh, probably an ingrained, uh, uh, you know, uh, an ingrained quality of my generation who actually, you know, lived the, the tech life. So probably uh, 19 years ago, uh, when I just joined the office, the very next day I said, no, we had to get into our ERP software in spite of small softwares and programs and that actually helped us you know scale up to this particular level i remember when i went to my father that you know i want to buy say 20 licenses of the erp software he said okay it's just a cd why don't you make copies of it <laughs> <laughs> so that's the journey we took and today you know when we're just moving on to a, a standard program like a sap or a microsoft cloud so that's the journey we have done so far and Technology, yes, it comes ingrained in us. So, for example, uh, last year at an event uh, in Mumbai on the 22nd of March, we launched our first Metaverse Top. Metaverse Top? Yes. Oh, that uh, sounds interesting. Con connected we would, Commerce. We would love to know more about it. Yeah, so that, that's the first uh, uh, an experience store for my staff and for the gamer community as of now because it is still very niche and only the uh, foreign luxury brands have actually ventured into Metaverse. Yeah. But, be, but not missing the ride, over there, so we launched a store in Metaverse. Uh, I mean, uh, my team is uh, exploring it, so we have got a couple of Oculuses over here, you know, wherein you know, they can just feel it, understand it, because till it is not ingrained in them, it'll never be executed. I mean, at the top, we can think of hundreds of things, but it has to be ingrained down to the lowest level for it to happen. And so this, we try doing it a lot. So we always, we always have a combination of a bottoms up, uh, uh, top down and a bottoms up approach in whatever Good. we do. That's nice. So you are, investing in technology you are experimenting into technology chat gpt is coming it is going to replace many things it as as it's been said um, no hard and fast thing though what if it replaces you also akhil what will you do then i'll find another job no problem <laughs> <laughs> the, po the point is uh, the human mind will always be bigger than what we have created so chat gpt is ai predictive technology metaverse they are a good tool to do a lot of transactions in a faster way, but they will never be able to replace human mind because human mind will always be bigger than what is creating. So what st strong business strategies are you building to compete or maybe stand the, the technological innovations which are going to come ahead? Mm -hmm. so, so in terms of, see, I tell you, uh, 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 sitting where I am today at, 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 the, at the topmost level of the leadership, so probably I think whenever somebody asks me what's the job profile, I said people management is my job profile. So that's the first thing I have to do is, you know, we've got such a large team with, you know, varied talents, varied uh, experiences sure. and varied capabilities. So, you know, just trying to, you know, get that thing together, bringing them one page so that they deliver what the organization requires is probably is, is something that I look forward to. And technology and your design and your retail, your channel, everything is a part of, you know, how you do that. So I would say for any, any, anybody on top today, I think people management skills is the primary face of care of everyone. So people management, if you have learned this, if you have mastered this skill, which means, I mean, you can manage each and everything. Yes, absolutely. I, I would say yes, because, you know, with, with the draws and highs coming every now and then, uh, COVID came, it was very easy to lose people at that time. It was very easy for organizations to save their profits and say, okay, you, I'm letting you go. I can, I can save money. But as a company, as a responsible company, we still stuck to our people. We, we, we asked them, okay, you're still there, don't worry. You're not capable that is okay we'll train you but you know leaving so organization will never grow by uh, you know letting people go we'll only grow by having more people though technology will also come the size of transactions are increasing now and then for example if i if, if 10 years I, I was just looking at uh, the population census last evening only so uh, at 1804 we the world had about 1 billion people and today we are 8 billion so you see the kind of competition the way things are changing and 
and and you know you have to understand the ecosystem and uh, you know if I, if I can I can I can make you understand what I'm saying. Yes, I have understood. Uh, but uh, Akhil, we have seen that when we talk about the brands, there are many fast fashion brands which have entered the arena in the Indian industry because we we was you said uh, many brands like Uniqlo's and Zara's of the world are yeah. there. But you have not been impacted by the competition and all. Then the brand has been sustain sustaining from such a long time. What are the sustaining? What what tips would you like to share that uh, how brands can build a sustainable business for them? See, I tell you the first thing I always tell everyone is you believe in your story first. You are there. Don't think that you are weaker than anyone else. See, the market is expanding. The customer is expanding every now and then. As I said, one billion to eight billion today. So th the market is expanding like anything. The disposable income is changing like anything. So let brands come. They'll come. They always create competition, and in this competition, they they motivate you to compete, to improve what you are. For example, it was it used to be a seller's ma seller's market 50 years back, and whatever the producer was producing, everybody was happy getting it. Today the things have changed. So that gives us an opportunity to do more research. You try to connect customers in a very different way because in the end you have this more competition, but it, it, it gives you more agility. So you must have seen the customer expectations also changing from then to now. How have you seen them changing? What steps do you take to match those expectations? Uh, see, yes. So as I was saying, it was seller's market and today it's, it's, it's a buyer's market. I remember back in 2002, uh, I, I would go to the North Campus and probably we always used to joke that, you know, uh, out of every 10 girls, eight girls would be wearing a, a, a Madame T-shirt, for example. That was then. But today when you go over there, you say, okay, it's about two, two people out of 10 would be, it is not that, you know, my brand is less. The competition increased. The option has increased for the customer, but it's still relevant. So a lot of customized marketing, a lot of uh, um, you know, uh, we've invested in a lot of tools where you know we understand the customer behavior, customer persona. So uh, as the customer is growing, the next the, ne the Gen Z who's going to be the next big customer for any brand in the country, they have to be targeted very well for that. The, obviously, the the today's customer who has uh, you know, the, in, for example, somebody like you who has a good disposable income in your hand, yes, you are a very important customer. But we always have to look at the future customer who will be the next you for us. So in that way, we have started focusing a lot on Gen Z customer. Like one of the foreign uh, sportswear brands, you know, is, is, is publicly talking that I am started designing for alphas. For me, Gen Z is also gone. So that is the speed. And you know, when you hear such things, so obviously you also get into that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that uh, uh, I would say a spiritual mode that, okay, what next? So what next? <laughs> 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 Lots of things on the pipeline. My, white, my whiteboard is full of a lot of ideas and a lot of things. And we are, we are gradually, you know, uh, trying to get into, get into that. So for us, as of now, completing the Pan India expansion is, is on the rolls. And then we've tested our waters with the Southeast Asia and the MENA region as well as a brand. And we'll be strengthening our positions over there and strengthening our position in the country as well. So it's, it's my playground. I have to be better prepared before competition comes. <laughs> That's nice. But when you talk about competition, we have seen the new age brands which are entering the arena. They are just uh, disrupting the category. Not just, they, they are basically yeah. disrupting the categories. And when we, talk, when we talk about the traditional retailers like you, which have been into the industry from a really long time, uh, you guys, uh, I mean, the brands like you uh, focus more upon scalability and profitability. Yes. What do you think is the right way to run a business? Scaling, uh, I mean, concentrating upon profitability and scalability or disrupting the category left, right and center? See, I tell you, if, if, if you build, begin with a noble cause, disruption is always welcome. But if, if probably you, I mean, what was happening with today's new age startup entrepreneurs is, you know, they have an idea and they straight want funding. With no proof of concept, you want funding. For five years, you will be riding on somebody else's money. You can get a lot of volumes from that. But what happens after that? You're, you're nowhere. People like, for example, for example, when um, uh, e-commerce came into India, a lot of offline retailers were of the opinion that, you know, it's, it's, it's actually disrupted a lot of uh, retailers. But then we had to learn that it is, again, a channel of sales for us. It is not a disruption for us. And we have to be very careful in how we play with them. So I would always say that, you know, uh, sustainability again, and sustainability will come with profitability. You cannot negate profitability at any cost. Because when, as, as I said before, that if I'm answerable to 2,000 families, I cannot risk my profitability for them. I mean, I, one of my consultancies always gives me a very good idea. That I tell you why you have to consult me every now and then, though you're too, too smart. Because one wrong action will impact 2,000 families. 
So this is ingrained in us and we'll always, probably will always be like that. Retail industry has changed a lot from uh, past so many years. What changes are you seeing, foreseeing in the future coming ahead? And how are you preparing to face them? So it's, it's, it's all gone digital, digital age. You know, the customer is more informed. The customer is uh, more confident. The customer is more aggressive in terms of, you know, what he or she wants to buy, procure, be it be grocery, be it be apparels, be it be technology, for example. And so as, as brands, we have to gear up for that. We have to ensure that, you know, what the customer requires is delivered to her or him. Um, for example, for us, uh, technology like Metaverse, for example, is again a, an, an early age thing that we want to do so that when the ecosystem becomes Metaverse ready, we don't miss out on what's happening. And because of your ecosystem, because of the category you're in, you can actually do it today. So you're betting bit, big upon technology in one line, if I have to say that. Uh, you cannot negate technology in any way. I, for example, uh, now we are, we are working on, again, a metaverse as we say. So today if I have to create my SS24 collection and, and in the traditional way I do it, it takes me up to 90 days, for example. But if we actually invest in you know good tools, technology tools like a PLM or maybe future metaverse, I can, I can do it in like less than 25 days. So that, 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 that's the speed. And the moment you have this speed, your agility increases, your go-to-market strategy increases. Uh, you can do customized things for uh, your cons consumer as well. So it, it changes. I remember uh, when uh, we were relatively uh, geographically consolidated and uh, uh, when 100% of my production was within my own plants. So on my stores, people used to even take uh, orders. For example, if this is a particular sto uh, st uh, style, they used to call out the factory, you have this uh, fabric? Yes, we can take orders for your customer. So that was when your uh, spread was small. But with this increase in spread, your agility also has to increase. True, true that. So, uh, Akhil, like third gen, gen entrepreneur, can we expect your kids also entering and joining the business? Or do you want your kids to explore the world and do whatever they want to do? See, uh, being, being a kids of businessmen, we've always told them that you have to work for your community. You earn money, that's fine. You have your luxury, everything fine. But in the end, what, is, what are you giving back to the society? So, primary facility, we are not required that they join this very business, though we are trying to create avenues for them. So, whenever they grow up, they, 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 uh, they become 25, 26. The avenue should be ready for them to join this business or an alternate or a or any, any other diversified business, but we are still, uh, you know, I mean, in today's generation, we are exposing the kids to so much of culture um, and so much of uh, options. I mean, for my kids, it's, it's okay that, you know, they, they can pursue. I mean, for example, my daughter, she's already set her eyes on NYU for journalism, and I said, pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty fine for us. That's nice. So, you're open to everything. I mean, I always say you cannot resist change. Change is inevitable. The more you resist, the more you fall back. You have to go with the flow. That, that, that's the reality, what we have understood. And that is the reason the company has been there from almost 90 years. Yes, I think, yes, the, why God has been kind with everything, with, with, our, with our customer relations, with our peer group, with our, uh, our, our team, our staff, that, you know, we've been there and hopefully we should, we should, we look a long way ahead as well. <laughs> I hope you go with the flow and you and you just keep on building the successful businesses the way you have been till thank now. Yeah, so you. Akil, before we close, we, I would love to have a quick chat with you. Uh, it's a rapid chat kind of a thing where I'll be asking questions from you at okay. a, rapid, a rapid speed and you also have to answer at a rapid Perfect. speed, right? So uh, for my first question is, which is the favorite business book which we have read? What are the lessons that you have learned from it? Okay, uh, so uh, I remember this, uh, pour my heart into it by Howard R. Schools, that was the next ex-CEO of Starbucks. That book was so amazing. It gave you so much of passion about the brand and the customer connect the brand creates. So that is one book that I always recommend. And even I you know, send it to people who wants to start, okay, I want to start reading a book. Well, this is the first book you read. And the next one on Indian context is, called, is Corporate Chanakya. A relatively very small book, but it makes so much sense. Favorite retail brand or the retailer? Apple. Nice. <laughs> uh, and. Offline or online, which is the preferred mode of shopping for you? Uh, for research online, for shopping offline. Why so? Uh, because with, with, with research, you, you actually, want, when you want to invest, so today it is, we are not buying things, we are investing in things now. Nothing is cheap, and you're investing, be it be a car, be it be a technology, be it be anything. So for a person like me, so this e-commerce or online or YouTube or social media is only a means to, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, experience understand and research. And offline, yes, being a retailer, I always like going offline because we also need to understand the experience that, you know, we're getting from the brands I like. And, you know, and you always use keep balancing about what the experience you're giving to your own consumer. So 
the retail industry has always seen you working and building a brand. They don't know what you do in your free time. What other things excite you apart from running a successful brand? Uh, you just picked it up. Uh, that's running. I am. I am an ultra. <laughs> I am an ultra marathon runner. So this is one thing that I do, and uh, it also focuses. Uh, you know. It, so for example, I always tell my team that you know I am running and my business is also running. <laughs> I don't need to stop. <laughs> So this is the inspiration for you, I can say. Yes. So so yes, it's 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 it's, it's a spiritual thing for me. When I when I, when I run, I mean, I, I do about say about about fifty kilometers a week. That's what I do. That's amazing. Yeah, and it 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 it, it you know, and and you know that 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 one hour every day or that twenty minutes every day, you know, plans your day in such a beautiful manner. I mean, it's 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 more like uh, any any sports pe person. If you ask, that's a spiritual thing for them. That's not a sport. That's a spiritual thing. So Akhil, my last question is, what is the uh, what is the advice that, would, that you would love to give to the fellow retailers or the upcoming retailers to make sure you can build a sustainable business which is going to last for generations going ahead? Always set your aspirations right. Don't hurry into things. Everything takes a sweet time. Let that time come and things will fall into places. So if, for example, if I am targeting X brand and I won't say I want to reach there, it's not possible because I have to do my sweet journey. For any entrepreneur, any brand, anyone who is running a company or a career succession also, it will take some time, it will take sweet time. Your effort you give has to be 100% and you will reach there. Thank you for watching this episode with Akhil Jain. It was an inspiring story listening from him. Next week, I'll be back with another retailer and another story. Till then, bye.